Welcome to another South Bank Investment Bulletin. Well, I thought we'd kick off and look at NatWest because it broke lower last week and did so in a very dynamic manner. So prices right now were back where they were at the beginning of 2021. And this also confirms that the range that's been underway since 2016 is still very much intact. And that the breakout from the range at the beginning of this year uh, failed. And now we're coming back down towards the lower side of the range. I would consider this whole uh, decline in 2020 to be a failed downside break. And interesting that, uh, and this is something that I talk about in the seminars I teach. It's also something that I, I wrote about in Crowd Money. But uh, when you get a failed upside break, it's quite likely that the price is going to come back down and test the lower side of the range. When you get a failed downside break, usually uh, then the price will go straight back up and test the upper side of the range. Well, we've had both examples of that over the course of the last few years. But then I think we also need to just pay attention to the fact that uh, the UK uh, banking sector collapsed in 2008 and the chances of it approaching those peaks again are unlikely. And instead, we've been in this very lengthy ranging phase for uh, years and more or less the 300p level is an area of resistance that has been almost impossible to exceed for an awfully long time. And something is going to have to change in a material fashion in order to uh, really get the gears moving again. And then uh, let's just look at the FTSE 350 banks because NatWest isn't the most important bank in the UK and it's uh, certainly not the largest. But the FTSE 350 banks index has pulled back sharply because NatWest is not the only bank that's under duress. Standard Chartered came through with uh, negative earnings. HSBC, with its massive exposure to China, is also under duress. And then Lloyd's, which is often regarded as uh, the most, uh, I guess, most exposed to the UK consumer, is rolling over here. And it's been ranging for the last three years. Every time it's come back to test this 40p level, it has bounced but there's no sign of a bounce just yet. And obviously what all of this pressure in the banking sector is uh, beginning to highlight is that liquidity conditions are not accommodative. And then when we think about uh, what's happening in the bond markets, well, uh, the 10-year yield on the gilt has uh, pretty much paused. Uh, so uh, let me put that up and uh, when we look at that, well, this is quite significant outperformance by bonds, where the yield is now contracting from the region of the peaks from the end of last year. This is something I've pointed out in numerous broadcasts. But what I thought would be also interesting today would be to look at the shape of the yield curve. What we can clearly see then is that the short end of the curve is very high. And when we look at maturities out to about six months, uh, well, then they're still hovering here around about 5.4%. Uh, and then the 10-year yield is a lot closer to about 4.5%. So there's a significant change there. Now, when we look at the two-year yield, well, then we are presented with four and three quarters. So we have an inverted yield curve, regardless of whether we look at the short end of the curve or the two year, they're both higher than the 10 year. And the reality for banks is that they borrow short term, they lend long term. And right now they can't make money from doing that. Now, uh, in the USA, an inverted yield curve is the most reliable lead indicator for future recessions there is. You don't have quite the same cause effect relationship with uh, the UK yield curve. So it's not as reliable a lead indicator. However, when it is now twinned with the very significant underperformance of the banking sector, it is something that I think we cannot afford to simply ignore. And there is clearly the potential that the UK is heading towards a recession. 
then the FTSE 250 has broken lower and now it's back in the region of the lows from 2022. Now we have a short term oversold condition and the index has been down for six consecutive weeks so it's not at all beyond the bounds possibility that we could get some pause of consolidation. But it has a lot of work to do in order to really confirm that we're back in a demand-dominated environment. And, of course, the UK does not exist in a bubble. So uh, let's then also look at what's happening in the USA. And the Nasdaq is uh, in, well, it was in mildly positive territory on Friday. And it might be a little steadier in Monday morning. Uh, but the index is right in the region now of its 200-day moving average. There's been a succession of lower highs and lower lows over the course of the last four months. And this continues to look like a, a chart that's under pressure. And if uh, UK banks are experiencing some stress, uh, well then, when JP Morgan's CEO comes out on Friday and said that he's going to sell a million shares and uh, raise over a hundred million dollars for himself, uh, then that's not good news for the uh, the share price of JP Morgan, which is one of the more successful banks. But then the broader banking sector remains under pressure and closed on its lows on Friday. Uh, so uh, this continues to look like a downtrend and the benefit of the doubt can be given to further downside until we have evidence to the contrary. So uh, obviously then uh, what this uncertainty is uh, beginning to create is the demand for gold and gold prices popped above the $2,000 level on Friday and are holding on to it so far. And uh, the reality is that markets are forward-looking. So what markets are looking at right now is the underperformance of banks, the underperformance of the wider stock market, the tech sector, which looks like it's under pressure. And this is all happening against a background where central banks have been raising interest rates. Uh, they've been reducing the size of their balance sheets. We've already seen stress coming through because of tighter liquidity. Then geopolitical tensions are rising and... Uh, there's uncertainty around housing markets. Then uh, there's also the weakness in the Chinese economy. And the Chinese government is belatedly uh, willing to spend some money on that and uh, increase the deficit that the, uh, that the government is running. But when I say that markets are forward-looking, they're looking at what the solutions are likely to be. And the solution, most likely, is that eventually there are going to be recessionary fears uh, that turn into recessionary reality, and that more money will need to get printed. And gold is a monetary metal, and when it is appreciating versus most currencies, uh, then uh, that really does help to highlight for everyone that what we are looking at right now is a loss of faith in the purchasing power of fiat currencies. And that is being driven by central banks uh, that have tightened up a lot and are at risk of tightening too much. And the traditional playbook for any kind of deflationary fear is print more money. And that, I think, is why gold prices are starting to rally now. Then, of course, we have this increasing geopolitical tension. So uh, when we think about some of the better performing shares in uh, the UK this year, uh, well, BAE Systems has uh, been trending higher uh, for the last two years. And then Rolls-Royce is the best performing share uh, of the large caps in the UK this year and has been uh, really resurgent uh, in most of that time, even if it is consolidating right now. And Melrose has also been among the uh, the better performers. And uh, that's another share that has been uh, really resurgent over the course of the last 12 months and is now consolidating. But these are very much defense-oriented, and it does help to highlight that uh, in a geopolitically tense environment, well, you start to see uh, a lot of demand for guns, and then you also see a lot of demand for butter. So guns and butter strategies are those that tend to be focused on by the government. So you get higher spending on defense and greater social programs, and that necessarily means there will be higher taxes too. 
and with the potential for a Labour government to be to form the next government in the UK, well then tax and spend is likely to be a really significant factor. And uh, if they're going to be spending on social programmes and defence, well they're going to be taking money out of people's pockets with the other hand. And uh, particularly the people that have money to t uh, in their pockets. So by and large that's going to be some of the wealthier pensioners I expect. So we're definitely in a more difficult environment overall. And uh, there is obviously the clear potential that ultimately central banks are going to have to start printing more money. And then that will be one of the causal factors behind a significant run up in gold. And I guess with that, I'll leave, I'll leave, oh, I'll leave you with that and I wish all the best to all of you.